Hello and welcome to the exploratory. If you're doing anything with APIs, you may have heard about API First. In this video, we'll explore how Postman can help you with your API First development process. There's a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. I'm here in Postman in my originally called uh, the exploratory API data workspace, and I'm going to head over to the API tab on the left and create a new API. I could either start from scratch, give it a name, a version, and then select a schema type, open API, RAML, GraphQL, and a schema format, or I can import a new one. I've already created one for the sake of that video, uh, so I'm going to import it right now. It asks me whether I want to generate a collection. Uh, I don't think I need one now. And then in the next step, it actually asks me if I want to publish it for my colleagues to be able to find it. Uh, same again, I'll push that for later. So here we go. Uh, I've got this overview page for my API that tells me what is the type, uh, open API 3.0, the format, and when it was last updated. Let's add a quick summary. Demo API for my friends. And then let's head over to the define tab. So the define tab is where you actually uh, have your API specification. But you can see here, it's a very simple uh, API, which has one path, videos, and one method get. So what this does, uh, it gets a list of videos. And you can see here, uh, it's an answer type, a response type of array, and it sends uh, videos back. So a few things here, this view of what's in your API specification, this view, which is the code version, and then at the bottom, a schema validated. For now, it's good. Uh, it passes all the, all the validation, but I'm going to voluntarily break it so you can see what happens. Do not try this at home. Cool. I broke it. If I click here, I can see line 26, uh, two validation error. The first one, it says the value must be a string. And then the second one is the value must be array, boolean, integer, etc. I'm going to revert it and put it back to array. Okay, so now it validates. So you'll have this validation on the fly for your API schema, which is pretty handy. Uh, a few other tools that you have in there is search. Let's say you had a much longer API schema, like 500 plus lines. Uh, you can just jump to a specific uh, place using this search. You can also copy the whole thing uh, to your clipboard. And if you were using a JSON format, then you could uh, do indentation straight away using that uh, click. If you're using uh, GitHub as a source of truth, you can also create a two-way sync by using that button. So what this does, it links your API specification with the file on the repository. Uh, whenever that file is updated on GitHub, it reflects on Postman. Uh, whenever you update it on Postman, it commits to, to the repository and updates it as well. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that as a first version of my API. Um, so let's say I'm going to create a new version and call it v1. Um, and all I'm going to carry over is the schema. Cool. So I've got a V1 of my API. Um, it's ready to be developed. And the way to do that, I don't really want to start going and creating a whole backend. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a mock server. So that mock server is going to be generated from that API schema. So I'll go ahead, create a new one, and generate it from the API schema. I'll call it um, exploratory mock collection. Um, and then in the advanced settings, there's a few options here. Uh, set the indent characters uh, for uh, whatever is in my collections. It could be space or tabs. Um, the request and response parameter generation. I've created some example uh, in my API schema, so I'm going to leave it to example. And then the folder organization, uh, which can be path or tags. Same again, I've used tags, so I'm going to keep it to tags. Name my mock server mock server and then create the mock server i could make it private which would um, mean that i would need my api key to query it or i could save it as an environment variable for uh, easier use but for now i'm just going to copy and paste the um, the url when i need it so i've got this new mock server and i can already start uh, creating it so i've got that url which i'm going to click on and copy and I'm going to go to the collection that was automatically generated, and that's this one. And in the variables, I can replace the default URL, which was localhost with uh, my mock server. Okay, 
to what this does. Now, if I go to my endpoint, it calls my mock server slash videos, and you can see already it works. So obviously it's only creating dummy data and this dummy data is coming from the examples uh, that are generated from the API schema, but it still works. I could give that to someone that works on the front end and they could start building a list view of whatever is in here. So it kind of decouples the work between uh, different places in your, um, in your development process. So that's great. Um, I've got that and it's working, but let's go back to my API and let's actually add an endpoint. So for now, I only add one, uh, just videos, but now what I want to do is being able to get a single video. So again, for the sake of the video, I'm not going to write it all. I'm just going to copy over um, that new path and that should be it. Let's see if it's not it, it's going to complain. It's not complaining. So that's great. Um, but obviously the collection that I just generated doesn't contain that, right? The mock server is not updated. So what I need to do now is go back to my mock server and I'll go here and in the validation column, just click to validate. Now it's complaining, issues found. Uh, let's go ahead and review the issues. It says it's missing uh, an endpoint. Fair enough, I just added it. So I'm going to select whatever I want to add. In this case, it's everything uh, and confirm the changes to the collection. Cool, and my collection's been updated. Let's go ahead and see if it actually works. So I now see a new endpoint and I can see uh, it hits my um, mock server video slash video ID and the video ID has been uh, randomly generated again uh, when I added it. And there we go, it returns the right thing. So it's validation from the API schema to the collection. And whenever I work on my API scheme and add stuff, I can now propag propagate it to whichever element I've created. But it also works the other way around. So let's say instead of this string value, I'm using a string and I send that. Now I see at the top here, there's an issue. So what it tells me it says, uh, it's validating against my demo API v1. And it says the path variable video ID needs to be of type number, but they found a string. Um, so I'm going to revert to number and now it should not complain. Cool. So that's pretty handy. Um, there's a few other things here. If I'd actually saved the mock to an environment, I could link that environment to that specific API version, but I didn't, so I'm not going to add it. Um, I could add documentation for uh, the documentation now. So I'll create a new documentation and call it Explorer Docs. And same way, I'll just leave it all to default and create a documentation. So now I have this documentation here, I can click on and start editing. So it takes markdown. Uh, I could add more stuff here. Um, some very important information, for example. Very important. Cool. Um, and then I could publish that, but that's the topic for another video. The same way, uh, if I had made changes to the um, API schema, I can validate my documentation and then push it. So let's move on to the next step. I've developed my API and it's kind of ready to be uh, tested. So let's add a new test suite. Once again, this test suite is going to be automatically generated from uh, my API schema. So I can create it and add it to the left. And I can steal the same uh, mock server URL to replace it here. Oop. So I've got a test suite for now. There's nothing. So what I'm going to do is go in the different uh, in the different request and add a couple of tests. So this one I'm going to test that it's status code 200, and this one um, I'm going to test that uh, the response. Let's see what's the response for that one. We want the response.name to be public workspaces. That pass? Cool. So I can see, oh, I didn't give the name. Video is public workspaces. Then this one, let's see. 
Okay, so my test pass. So that's fine, and I could like keep on doing it one by one. But what we want you to be able to do is just from the API tab, again, I'm in my test tab, and I can just run the test from here. So it runs all the tests in the collection, and I can go back here and it says, that's run results, cool, passed, it's ready to go. So now I have this V1 version, I'm happy with it, it passes all the tests, and we'll assume, and again, I'm not going to do it right now, but we'll assume it's not being deployed. My uh, API is running somewhere. Now what I want to do is being able to observe uh, and check its health, right? So I'm going to go ahead and in the observe tab, I can now add a monitor. Same again, create a new monitor on one of these collections. I'll get my test suite because it already contains some tests. Give it a name. Um, current version, no environment, and it's gonna run every hour. Cool, so I've got this uh, monitor. I trigger it manually because I don't wanna wait um, and go back to my API in the meantime. So what this does basically, every hour is gonna run. I could have set up some alerts, uh, I think we have a video around that that you can check out. I'm not going to go into details. But basically what it does, uh, runs through that collection that I've set up. Um, ideally, this would be your production URL and not your mock server URL. And whenever there's a fail, it's going to send you uh, based on whichever um, whichever integration you have set up, page PageRDT or whatever, it's going to send you a notification. So you can see here, it's run once already. Uh, failed percentage, 0%, love to see it. Um, test results, pass, pass. And then you can see the console log if you want to get even more uh, details around what's happening. So that was a lot. We have a full API uh, development process here. I'm going to run through that after, but the first thing I want to do now, or the last thing I want to do is I have a fully working API but now I want my team to be able to discover it, uh, use it, and to that, I'm going to add it to the private API network. So my V1 is the one that I want to use. It's a demo API for my colleagues this time, and I'm going to add it to the network. Here we go. I can go to the listing, and they could go there as well. Uh, they could just search for it, and they could see, oh, there's these new APIs. Um, it could be a different squad in your work that is using it. Uh, there's different use cases for that, but yeah, they can just go discover uh, and start using it from there. Cool, so that was a lot. Let's quickly uh, go through what we've done. We did uh, start it from the specification. I had one, I imported it, um, and we created a new API from that. We went to the development phase, uh, created a mock server and the documentation from it, and did some debugging. So I did uh, a new endpoint. We then moved on to testing phase. Um, so we wrote some tests and then we ran it from the API tab uh, just to check that it was working and then assumed it was deployed. Obviously I didn't do it, uh, but assumed it was and we set up a monitor to get alerts um, to check just if it was always healthy. Um, we have also videos around like how to add it to your CI CD pipelines, uh, but I'm not gonna jump into that. So yeah, covered a lot, hopefully it helped you. Um, I'm going to leave a few more links in the description below to learn more about API first and just the API builder in general. Um, but yeah, if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments. Uh, I'll try to answer as much as I can. And with that, have a good day. Bye-bye.